welcome back to Simply Kajika, a place for budding and aspiring entrepreneurs. For those of you who have been with me, welcome back. If you're new to this channel, I create content to help people start their home care agencies. I'm also a business mentor and I'm an all around cheerleader for helping you reach your dreams. So in today's video, I want to share with you my experience as I transitioned from a six figure nine to five job into really wanting to pursue entrepreneurship. Now, I will tell you, there have been some bumps and challenges along the way. However, I am in love with being my own boss and I would not change the experience for the world. Even though I still consider myself new in this journey, I still feel like I have learned enough to pass back on to you. And as I continue to grow and develop and learn, my goal is to make sure that I make your journey a little bit easier as you make your transitions. So if this is something that you want to listen to or be a part of, then make sure you stay tuned. To begin, I know it takes a real leap of courage to stand up for yourself and decide that you want something better. So it's not something that I took lightly in my own life and I'm really here to help you um, in educating yourself to decide if this is something you want to do for you. So if one person puts in the comment that I was able to help them in their journey, then I would have done my job because I want to make sure that you guys are equipped with the information in order for you to make that decision in your own life. So a little bit about me, I had to look back and find the date. I actually quit my job on December 23rd, 2020. I worked for an HR software and payroll solutions, HCM, for a little over six years. And guys, I wanna tell you something. For the first two years that I was there, I loved it. I absolutely loved my job. I loved the people that I worked with. I actually got to travel a little bit. I really got to see my fingerprint at work and that means I was able to create processes and policies. I was able to run departments. Um, you know, at that time that really meant a lot to me because I really could see my efforts at work. Soon though, I noticed that there were starting to be a lot of changes at the company level. There were a lot of changes in leadership and I found myself having to prove myself over and over and what felt like over again. And guys, I have to be honest with you, I just decided I didn't want to do that anymore. Now I should explain a little bit further here. So in the past 20 years, I've held several leadership positions at different levels. And earlier in my career, I really scratched and fought to get myself to a certain place and so it was easier for me back then if I wasn't getting what I wanted or if an employer didn't want to or or couldn't give me what I needed then I would just kind of move on to the next bigger and greater thing but this time I was feeling a little bit different I didn't want to just pick up and go because as I told you a moment ago I really felt like this was it this was something that I enjoyed I was able to express myself create, creatively and the benefits were wonderful and I loved the people that I worked with. I realized that my quality of life wasn't what I wanted it to be. So I wasn't taking those vacations that I wanted to. I was feeling stressed out. I wasn't able to pick my kids up and spend time with them, you know, pick them up from school, take them to school. Those things that are important to me. In other words, I wasn't fulfilled. And so I had to ask myself a very serious question, which is because I knew that I was not fulfilled, what would it take in order for me to feel fulfilled? And guys, I don't think that answer came very easy to me. I really had to look inward and kind of put together a vision of what professional fulfillment looked like and once I did come to the conclusion of what that was, I knew I had to have it and I was not going to stop until I pursued it. So the first key that I have for you is to understand what you want out of life. Now, I know that sounds incredibly vague, 
But what I'm asking you to do is sometimes you have to start big in order to drill down and really get to the core of what will make you happy. So how I usually like to start this conversation with myself is when I'm happy, when I'm loving what I'm doing, what exactly is it that I'm doing? And so when you think of when you're at your best, when you're shining, what are you doing at that time? What are you working on? What are those tasks? And so for me, when I ask that question, I realize when I'm building, when I'm creating, that's when I find myself performing at my best. Then you want to capture that thing so that you can decide, is this something that you can pursue? Could this be a business for you? Is this something that you can do full time or otherwise? Also, when you're thinking about happiness, you don't always want to think about money, right? Because you hear that saying, if you're doing what you love, the money will follow. I think that's a very true statement because you can be making pretty good money. As I said, I was making six figures and I was, I was miserable. So we're not talking about money here. We're talking about really feeding your soul, really going after those things that, that you are passionate about. The other question that you can ask yourself is what do you want out of this life? Okay, so you want to be happy. Well, what does happy mean? That, you know, for me, it meant being, being able to go on a nice vacation once a year. It meant being able to be more present with my children and not upset while I was with them. And being able to have a little bit of flexibility. I was just talking to someone right now. We were talking about being able to have flexibility in our schedules. So that's what happiness looks like for me. Sit down, have that conversation with yourself, you know, and really decide what is it that makes you happy. And then once you discover what makes you happy, you could really start dovetailing that into what you actually want out of life. The second key that I have for you is don't underestimate the value of the skill sets that you bring to the table. So I want to let you in on a little secret, <laughs> okay? Every job that you've had, all of the experiences, education, maybe stretch assignments that you've had, any volunteer work that you've done, all of those experiences have developed into skill sets that you carry along the way. And the secret I want to let you in on is if you've done these tasks, if you've done these assignments, if you've managed departments, if you've done customer service, for example, for a period of time, these are all things that you can perform for yourself in your job. I'll give you a real life example. Um, the last job that I had, the one of the last assignments that I had is I was asked to create a team, so to recruit and hire and build a team for what turned out to be 40 employees. These were temporary employees and they were to support different parts of the organization. And so at the time when I first got the assignment, I'm not going to tell you I was thrilled about it, but I remember thinking, okay, you really don't know when you'll need to reach back on this experience you're about to gain. So I really did embrace it. Turned out to be a great time for me professionally. I actually really loved what that turned into. But fast forward just a little over a year later, I didn't know that I would be managing close to 80 of my own employees in my business. So see how at the time you really don't know what the future entails for you, but you really want to embrace those experiences that you're, that you're going through because you're going to need that experience. You're going to need those skill sets as you're transitioning into your own business. It's also important to do a self-assessment and identify those areas where you really excel, areas where you may need some polishing, and then those other areas where you really have opportunities. And initially when you start your business, most of us end up being one-stop shops. Um, however, as soon as you can hire help or as soon as you can delegate some of the tasks and responsibilities that are associated with running your business, 
then you're going to want to outsource or delegate those responsibilities for those areas of opportunities that you've identified. And then don't forget to sharpen the skills that you do have. During this time before I started my business, that year that I was talking about, I was taking classes, I was taking seminars, I was on YouTube learning for from other people as they were growing and expanding their businesses. So don't forget, even though you may do well in a certain skill, it doesn't mean you don't need to sharpen it because as times change, you know, so does operations, so do how, um, so do processes. Um, so you want to make sure that you're still kind of freshening, refreshing that skill set um, so that you are setting yourself apart in that area when you run your business. The third key is a real important key and that is to make sure you put together a plan. Now I've watched a couple of these videos and I am horrified when I hear people just up and quit their job. You know, I'm horrified and then I admire that person all at the same time because I know it couldn't be me. <laughs> I know that it could never be me. I am a planner. Um, I don't like things to take me by chance. And so at the end of the day, you have to know yourself to know whether you can just up and quit or if you can really put together a plan. So for instance, things that were in my plan, I knew that I would have to do a lot of work in a short amount of time. I didn't really want to worry about how bills were going to be paid. So I had set aside some money to ensure that I wouldn't have to worry about those financial responsibilities that would not go away just because I'm now willing to pursue my dreams. So really, um, you know, set aside that savings plan in terms of, okay, so, you know, what is it going to need for me to live three, four, five months down the road? So some of you who have been with me for a while know that I created a business plan. And what I did with that business plan is I broke it down into actionable steps. And next to that actionable step, I assigned a timeline. What that did is as I was working every day, giving 110% to the job that I was at, I was also making sure that I was making the progress that I expected to be making so that I could make this uh, resignation something real for me. And so every day, Every weekend, I knew what I was supposed to be working on. I knew when things were due. And sometimes I had to refine that plan. But for the most part, I was on step. I was lock in step with my plan and what I needed to do to move forward. Now, I know that some of you actually have reached out to me um, in terms of not knowing really how to uh, build your own business plans. Some of you have started your business plan, but you really don't know what all to put into it, what are some of those areas that you should be concentrating on. And so I am, as, as quickly as I can, I'm coming up with some real life solutions for you guys to help you in that part of your, your process. I know that some people have started businesses with, without business plans. However, I really do think that you need a business plan before you start your business. So stay tuned for more on that. The fourth and final key that I have for you guys is be ready to work hard. You know, guys, the one thing that you will always get from me and my channel is honesty. And I know a lot of times people tell you that entrepreneurship is Japanese cherry blossoms and unicorns. But I'm here to tell you that I have never worked this hard in my life. Now, I'm just going to be honest with you. And the reason why I say that is because you don't have a team to fall back on. You don't have your boss telling you what needs to be done and when it needs to be done by. Um, it's all on you. With that being said, I have never felt so free in my life. I wouldn't take back anything. I wouldn't change anything about this journey. It has been so freeing to create a business and stand up on it. And guys, a bonus tip that I have for you is celebrate all wins. I, I think it's so important to take a moment to recognize accomplishments. So whether, you know, you get your license, whether you finally find that office space that you've been looking for, um, you know, you get your first client, uh, you book your first deal, there has to be a celebration because it'll give you that fuel, you'll use that momentum to catapult you into the next achievement, the next celebration. So make sure you're acknowledging and celebrating all of your wins. Something that's not a tip, but how I want to close this video is make sure you're having fun. If this will mean anything that it's meant to me, 
I'm having a great time. I'm having the time of my life. Now, I'm not going to sit here and say I haven't had sacrifices. There hasn't been challenges. However, um, those challenges, those, those small circumstances fail into comparison into the time that I'm having. I would not change it for the world. I hope this video has helped you gain perspective on your journey and shed some light on, on your decision, on your final decision on what you're going to do. I want you to know that life is meant to be joyful. It's going to be challenging at times, but overall you should be experiencing true joy in your life. My mantra for 2022 is that the world is for the bold. And so I have just decided I'm going to be bold. I am going to do what I was afraid to do before. I am going to try new things. And if those things don't work, I'm going to try something different. I am not going to let myself be held back by my own limitations. For all of this time, I allowed myself to think that I wouldn't be able to generate my income. I, For years, I got paid every two weeks and didn't really feel fulfilled, but I was safe because I knew every two weeks I would get that check. Now that I have dipped my feet in the entrepreneur waters, <laughs> I am not turning back. I'm actually excited to see what's next even after this. That's it for today's video. I really hope you got something out of this content that you can apply to your situation, that you can apply to wherever you are in your journey. In the upcoming weeks, I will be sharing with you some fresh content, providing with support, and really just cheering you on as you achieve some amazing things. Please don't forget to spread the word to others who are taking their leap of faith in their journeys. Guys, don't forget, if you haven't already, please make sure you uh, hit the like button. Make sure you subscribe so whenever I drop an amazing video, you guys are there to watch it. And most of all, guys, most of all, stay blessed.